Hi, this is Yuri Rebitz from Global Composers Network, and today we're looking at the Eric Whitaker Choir from Spitfire Audio. Now, this library has been out for a while, and voice and choir sample libraries are one of those specific kinds of libraries where a lot of different factors, when put together, can affect the final result. As the human voice has such a wide range of applications, it's important to know that not all choir libraries are created equal and for the same purpose. What Eric Whitaker Choir is great at, we'll have a look at in this video. So for this review, I've written a track for a choir and piano. You can find two links to the track below. One version is just a choir and the other one is both choir and the piano, just to give you two options to compare. So first, I'd like to play through the track for you and then we'll go into it and do a quick run through the library as well as going through the individual parts of the track. Here we go. So that's the track. Uh, let's first have a look through the library itself to see what it offers. So once you open it up, um, it actually comes with two versions. One is Eric Whitaker and one is the Eric Whitaker uh, Evo Grits, which we'll have a look at a little bit later. So when you open up the library, you get the new Spitfire playback engine, uh, which is no longer using contact, but they have their own playback engine, which they can customize to their needs. Um, so the first time you open it up, you get the 2D all-in-one loaded up. And then if you click up here, you can switch between different um, ranges or different articulations as well. So the library itself um, has 22 singers in total. And these are split into six sopranos, five altos, five tenors, and six bass voices. So in total, it comes with 170 techniques in the choir section and also 111 evolutions in the Evo grids. So Evo Grid is Spitfire's unique take on creating interesting layers of voices either by randomizing positions of the articulations or by using built-in presets that combine these articulations in creative and playable new ways. So let's have a look. Um, let's just go and start with a soprano. So I'm going to load up all in one 
and we're going to play a bit and see what it sounds like. So from the get-go, you can hear that it's pretty realistic. Um, so these are the, like, right now I have the legato patch loaded up. You can also choose the long. Now, the difference between these two is that with legato patches, you can only play one note at a time. And this is one of the reasons why there are so many tracks in this track, because I wanted to have it as realistic as possible. I wanted to push this library to the limit to see how realistic I can get it. And that's why the piece itself is all relatively minimal as well. So I had to create all these different, uh, different legato patches to get it at, as close to the real sound as possible. So if you want to play several notes at a time, you have to use the long patches. Sounding really nice there. And then you have some short ones. All the different articulations come with different kinds of um, words. So you have A's, you have M's, you have O's, and so on and so on. So you have legato M's as well. By the way, if you hear any clicks during this video, that's probably the limitation of my computer and not the sampler, the library itself. So then you have long M's. Because amps are really quiet in their nature, uh, of course, when recording these sounds, you will hear some background noise here and there. You have short amps. Legato O's. So even the bigger jumps work really well. Very, very nice. Long O's. and so on and on. I'm not going to go through all the patches, but let's just have a look at the some more interesting ones as well. So dynamic swells. O's. Soft, breathy, ass. It's important to know that, of course, all the patches come with different mic positions as well. So if you want to turn off the tree mic and you want to bring up the ambience to really push it down, you know, into the background, you can do that. Now, one thing I have to notice here, uh, that not all of these are syncable. So not all of these will lock with your BPM in your DAW. Uh, there are a couple that will, but there are others that will not. Um, so... I was really surprised to learn this because I was writing this track and, you know, I wanted to have these na 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 synced up and now I couldn't get them to sync up and there was no setting where the, any, at least where I could see to sync them up. So I contacted Spitfire and, you know, they said, unfortunately, there, there are a few patches that will sync up with your DAW, but there are some that will not. So you just have to be aware of that just to be sure. 
but they are very realistic, obviously, because they were sampled that way. Um, you also have some effects here and pitch clashes, clashes. <sighs> This can be really useful in transitions and with, you know, some specific applications such as horror cues and things like that. <laughs> One really cool thing about this library is that you can really define the release times and things like that and tightness so you can really get the samples to, um, you know, end in the way that you want them to end. So these are Sopranos. Um, let's just quickly have a look at the altos, for example, ums. Now ums are usually the quietest, so you will hear a little bit more noise with these samples. super realistic they work really really well i was really impressed the first time i tried this library i was really like blown away by the realism of it um so i have some rhythmic ones is here as well You can, you can imagine the possibilities of just like adding some delay and tremolo and things like that on top and really having a really fun, creative time with some of these patches. Um, let's go down to tenors now. So let's go and load up the os. <laughs> Now, Legato is so good with these, and that's what made me choose, you know, all the different patches because I didn't want to waste it. I didn't want to go and head and just, you know, <laughs> or I can have a more realistic version of it by, you know, doing three individual tracks of Legato. So I went ahead and did that. It took a little bit longer to write, obviously, but it was really worth the effort, I think. Um, so you have some short ones. <laughs> some dynamic swells. They have some interesting ones here, like pitch clashes, clashes. interesting effects, some tension building and things like that. Uh, I have minor second, major second, and so on. And then let's go down to basses. So let's go to legato basses, one of my favorite patches, obviously. and so on. So this is really the overview of, you know, and then you have, obviously you have a um, combination of all of them, which is really cool as well, but that's about it. And then you have um, Eric Whitaker Choir Evo Grids, which are basically um, really interesting ways and very playable ways of coming up with unique compositional devices that you can use, um, you know, all of which originate from the samples we just went through, but they are laid out in your, on your keyboard in a way where you can just like start playing and, you know, you lay down some chords and you see what happens, basically. So you have the presets here on the left and then, you know, the first one is Feeling Lucky where you just keep clicking until something really cool comes up and you see by the color of the keyboard here where uh, these different kinds of articulations fall into. So you have, you know, 
episodic dynamic symbol and so on and so forth. <laughs> some effect patches there as well um, so it's pretty interesting and then of course if you go to more um, episodic ones So you can get the picture of what, what this is all about. So it gives you like a nice semi-random um, collection of different articulations and devices to work with. So really cool capabilities there. Now, let me just go through a couple of these um, tracks and I'll show you how I put these together. So as I said already a couple of times, I used as many legato uh, patches as I could where it was necessary. So for example, if we go to these ones, I used the same patch twice because I wanted to use the same patch but with two different voices. really well so once you start adding the sopranos really with the main melody it really comes to life so here we go so just the sopranos then in this next section is really cool because I use the same um, legato O's but three times. So um, so you can also see that I added here some evos for some effects. So let's see what that sounds like. It's basically a human version of a noise riser, if you will. So um, you have sopranos, and then we add legatos to that, and then you have the intro, basically, without the piano.
and then of course that section we that we already played and then the second part the B section if you will comes in here and here I added some uh, more long basses <laughs> section but before we do I want to play you so also the shorts here the biggest section where also the tenors come in and all that good stuff so let me just play you the tenors and the basses of the last section <laughs> shouts in the end because when I was exploring the library it they work really well and my you know uh, instinct immediately went to the the final section of the track where I could use these shorts to bring out some more um, energy so um, let's then add altos and sopranos And then for the end, I'm going to add the evos as well as the piano. And then the section after that is actually goes back into the intro theme. And I'm using just a soprano legato ums for the solo vocal line and the pianos for the intro chorus. So that's what it sounds like. So let me wrap this review up by saying that obviously the human voice is the most familiar sound to our ears and as such they are extremely sensitive to minimal changes in it and we are trained to pick up different emotions, volume and more from it merely from having been used to hearing it so much throughout our lives. And a lot of that translates into singing. So we can pick up details in transitions, pitch changes and more obviously from this 
we can only assume how difficult it is to create a choir library that sounds good, is playable and realistic at all at the same time. Now, Eric Whitaker Choir surely does provide a lot of that in one sample product. There are two things that bother me uh, a little bit when using it, though. The first one was a strange way that you have to set it up in case you're using one external hard drive to use the library on two different computers. Um, even when you set this up, if you do an update to the library, uh, you have to split the patches into two folders, one for each computer uh, again, so after each update. Um, luckily, Spitfire's support was amazing as usual and helped me out really fast with that. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I still to prefer to use Contact. The other one being uh, the option to purge samples, obviously. Um, the second thing we noticed when mixing the track was that there was some noise present in the lower male voices. Um, this becomes more and more apparent if you s decide to stack more of these on top of each other. So you might end up noticing some clicking and popping in the mix if you do so. While some of these technical details could be present, the amount of detail and realistic legato passages, as you could hear, um, one can achieve with this library is indeed very, very high. Now, while this library may not be the go-to library for epic vocal shouts or best fit for super loud later trailer music, I think it's a perfect library for choral writing, uh, adding really realistic choir colors into your own compositions, or just adding some vocal textures uh, and vocal interesting vocal sound beds and effects to your work. Um, so we hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, leave a thumbs up to the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, join the Global Composers Network group on Facebook, or visit our website, www.globalcomposersnetwork.net. Thanks.